What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be reacting to the hit TV show 60 Days In once again. And I swear, every episode I've seen so far has left me wondering, like, how is this even possible? Because, you know, I've been locked up quite a bit, and where I'm from, you know, you see situations like you're going to see today, but it just happens differently. As well as the inmates involved, you typically don't see these type of people uh, getting riled up and calling any kind of shots in any way. At least in the places I see. So, I'm going to break down these situations to the best of my abilities and tell you exactly how it probably should have went down. If you're new and enjoyed the content, do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out the other playlist. Over five years worth of content for you to start watching now. All right, so we're going to start off with this individual, Mr. Thump. Mr. Thump is supposed to be a gang member in the pod, and it looks to me like he's one of the biggest as well. He's also known to be a little bit of a troublemaker, and the inmates in this pod, they stand for no trouble. But he's just coming back into the pod, and I've been following these episodes. I really don't know where he went to begin with. Maybe someone wrote him out the pod or something along those lines. I'm not sure, but he's coming back in. And Mr. Carlos here is one of the participants of the program, but he's been having issues with Thump ever since he's seen him in the reception block. He's already pulled him to the side and said, hey, look, there ain't gonna be no horseplay. You ain't gonna be getting in people's situations, no gang signs, none of that stuff in this block. But Thump's back in town. Let's see if he's gonna act right. No way. First off, these are the gators I'm used to. A gator is a mat without any sheet, but this is the typical type of mat that you're gonna see in lockup. The mat's folded up because they have no pillow and it's so flat and it's ripping apart, it kind of resembles some gator skin. Most of these participants been coming in with these nice little fluffy Cadillacs, which is a nice map. And that's something you hardly ever see. Come into the blocks I've been in with one of those and you're not built like that, someone's gonna take it off your hands. And you can't really tell, but there's like nylon rope holding all this little blue fake leather together. And that stuff is used for all kinds of things. Fishing line, dental floss, hanging things, tying things up. I mean, anything that you need a little bit of strength for that's where you get it or the sheet of course people like to break the sheets but mr thump came into the cell hot and i thought he was probably gonna be friends with the guy the way he jumped on his bed you never sit on anybody's bed without their permission and second of all if you do get permission don't ever sit next to where their head lays sit more towards the front of the bed trust me i've seen fights like that happen dude will come in he had permission to be in the cell and sit on guy's bunk but when he came in he seen he was sitting on his damn pillow all of this is potential fight material Damn, they are bidding in this cell. Nick over here looking like a young pirate slash King Griffey. Look at Carlos' calves just dangling. Old spade player over here riding the gator as well. Probably owes a couple steak cakes out to a few people in the block. But see, now these are the type of situations that you don't typically see. You got old man Rogers getting out the bunk, kind of sticking up for his selling. To be completely honest, most people probably would have knocked old man Rogers out for talking to him the way he did. Even though it wasn't really disrespectful, the tone in his voice was like he's his father. You just typically don't see a white guy talk to a younger black gang member the way that this guy is. That's just the reality of what I've seen. But you will see elderly guys snap off from time to time, man. They're going through it too. Don't disrespect nobody here. Huh? Damn. Oh. Here, Steve. Oh. Here, Steve. Oh. Calm down, Steve. You knocked the hell so, out. The moment. Oh man, oh man. 
Carlos over here doing exactly what he said from the first episode. Don't be sunning me. He's been sunning thump ever since he walked through the gate. Acting like he's his damn father or something, man. This is unreal. First and foremost, even with the old head, man. If he approaches you hostily and you're on the top bunk, you better hop off that shit like a firefighter and pop on them damn boots. It's time to put out the fire, baby. Or at least be ready in case you have to put it out. You know how many people I see get yoked up off that top bunk and not clean out? Shit, I did to someone. I thought I killed him. I literally thought I took that man's life. And uh, thank God he woke up out of that. Bro, stop laying on people's shit, bro. Yeah, real talk. Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Stop laying on people's shit. What would you do if you were in thump shoes and seen Carlos say, look at me when I'm talking to you? Man, Carlos the pod boss for real, huh? But to me, that is definitely fighting words, man. You feel me? I told you, you're on the last strike with me anyway, homie. I'll pack your and put you on the door. You want that? Or you can shoot your favorites. Which one you want? I'm not gonna sit here and let you disrespect nobody in this door. You understand me? You hear me? You understand me? Look me in my eyes when I'm talking to you. All those words, man, would have had me seeing red. But Carlos is definitely the ringleader for sure, man. Pod boss material 100%. Every, look, he's got goons everywhere. Now the situation has calmed down a bit and the day has progressed. We got another participant here, Mr. Darius. And he's about to start a little group session with the inmates, give him a little bit of financial advice, which is always good, especially in jail, man. It helps to preoccupy your mind. You might actually learn something. Believe it or not, you'll see all kinds of smart individuals in lockup, especially jail. But when it comes to really learning a craft or something along the lines of a career, that happens in prison. If you're lucky to not be a violent offender. Financial money. What about you? Hey, and that's what it is for a lot of people. So one of the most important things when I say financial freedom, that doesn't mean you're rich as you know. Man, come on! I wonder how many people show up if there wasn't no food at the scene. Hey, man, you bring food to any damn table for free and lock up, you're gonna get anybody up in the mix. Shit, I got plenty of canteen, but it's free. I'll be there. But you got guys actually writing down notes of what Darius is saying. And, you know, uh, every inmate in here, you know, is for doing something bad. But at the same time, a lot of them are, are thirsty for education. Thirsty to learn anything of any kind. Because when they're in the streets, they're out there doing other things that kind of takes their attention away from it. So when you're locked up, all that stuff is stripped away. And really, some of the best ways to kill time is through education. But yeah, you bring food to the table for free in jail, you're guaranteed to get a crowd. Well, being something different to everybody else. How you get money? I work with Jeff Bezos. The easiest shit in my life I've ever done is become a reseller. A reseller? Yeah. And you don't need no money to start this. You have items in your house that you not use. Like the old video games that we used to play. PSP, PSP, PlayStation games, used items. Man, I got probably a million dollars worth of old video games and systems and stuff like that, right? If I were to take it to GameStop right now, I'd probably get twenty-two fifty. That's right, not twenty-two thousand. I'm talking about twenty-two dollars. And you know, half of them are probably saying, "Bro, I ain't never had no games growing up. I ain't have shit, so I ain't got nothing to be selling or, or flipping." If I ran that group, I'd say this, bro. If you want to be successful when you leave lockup, this is what you do. You're going to need a job and you can't be picky. I say Chick-fil-A, they're paying good money right about now. If not Chick-fil-A, McDonald's ain't too far off. Once you get the money coming through, then that's when the dedication really kicks in. You always have to be looking for the next bigger step. Like me, I was working at a sub shop with two kids. My wife was working as well. Trust me, I did not want to be in that damn place. Not one bit, but I had to do what I had to do. I didn't want to go back to prison robbing and stealing and stuff like that, so so I grinded it out at the sub shop, and one day, you know, landscaper crew came in. I served them as subs, and I said, hey, I'm trying to get the hell out of here. Hire me, bro. I'm awesome at landscaping. Next thing you know, I'm a professional landscaper. But that would probably be my biggest piece of advice. At least if you have money coming through, you can go buy old items and stuff like he's talking about and then resell them. But you definitely got to keep in mind, the majority of these guys ain't got nothing out there at all. 
Places to go shopping. Where? Goodwill, DDs, Walmart, yep. yep. SHL, uh, yep. Facebook. I have never spent more than twenty dollars on any item ever as a reseller. Appreciate you putting me on that because that's the answer. That's where it's at, man. But I'm gonna wrap it up right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you enjoyed and learned a few things along the way. But let me just say this, man. This pod is definitely a safe one. You'd be super lucky to be walking into a place like this because you're going to be pretty much safe. If you ever have a situation, you can just run to Carlos and he'll fix it, right? That typically would never, ever happen in jail where you just you got some kind of problem and you're going to have some Superman there to, to save you. You know, so these guys are very lucky to be in such a safe cell block. But if you're going into jail for the first time and you think that it's going to be like this, chances are you're going to be in for a rude awakening. But there are some pods across the country that are safe like this. Trust and believe. But anyways, as always, I salute every last one of you who've been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.